if it's edited or anything. Um, and if you want to do it, yeah, okay, you got it. Yeah. All right. Um. I'm trying to, well, I'm just going to go without, go without my speaker notes because I still haven't figured out how to like be able to see my speaker notes and show you the presentation as you're supposed to see it on Zoom. Um, so Islandora supports metadata as Drupal fields. And then you can do other stuff with the data in that field um, is my premise. So this is sort of a response to ongoing confusion and questions about what is meant by Drupal fields when people are starting to like onboard on and onto the new Islandora. And I should also say when I say Islandora here, I am referring to the new Islandora, Islandora 8, Claw, you know, whatever, 2.0, <laughs> whatever it is we're calling it. Um, and it, it keeps jumping. Okay. Um, so this question keeps coming up. Um, and then I've seen statements in various documents and presentations about like Islandora supports storing XML metadata and Islandora supports mods or Dublin core or any metadata and Islandora provides linked data, all of which technically from particular viewpoints can be true, are true, but when you're coming on as a metadata person and you hear those, I think they really give you the wrong idea about what you're facing in getting into Islandora at this point. Um, so I wanted to go through and give some examples of that. So first off, what is a Drupal field not? So as metadata folks, we hear about like mark fields, Dublin core fields and elements and stuff like that. A Drupal field is not a field like that. Like it's not part of a set or defined metadata schema. So we just get that off the table. That, that isn't what we're talking about here when we talk about fields. So what are we talking about? Um, background, uh, so Islandora is basically at this point, Drupal with extra features and assumptions added on to manage content. Um, Drupal is a web app and it stores all of its data that it uses in a system in a database. And a database, do not quote me on this in a research paper as a definition of a database, um, is an interconnected bunch of tables um, that hopefully organizes data in some efficiently usable way for a system. And a database table is similar to a spreadsheet, which is something we're all intimately familiar with. So columns are the fields in the spreadsheet and rows are the field values that you have for any given item. We're familiar with this. Um, we're also familiar with spreadsheet programs, helpfully messing up our data by inferring the wrong data type of a field. Um, so you all know what I'm talking about here. Um, databases don't let that happen. They make you, before you can put data in a field, they make you say, what data type is this field? explicitly. And then you might get into trouble if you try to put something in that doesn't match that. So um, this sort of goes around the question of what is a Drupal field, because now I'm talking about Drupal field types. Um, so each column in the database must have a field type defined. So when you go in to add a field to your content type in Drupal in Islandora, um, you have to start by specifying the field type. And this shows you like the beginning of the list here. Um, and most of these are core Drupal field types. Um, authority link, EDTF, and further down the list, typed relation have been added specifically by Islandora as field types for our use. And then the name field type there is, is a module from the Drupal community that's added in and, and it's used it's used in the person taxonomy term and maybe somewhere else, but I know it is used there. Um, so you can select a field type for your field. And most of the interesting stuff around what fields do in Islandora comes from their field type. So like when you define a field type, 
you define a data structure for it, like how is it going to be stored in the database? There is code for it that is a field widget that says this is how this is going to behave when you enter data in a form. There are dis there's a display formatter that is written for it. It's like, so when you view this data that you've entered in this field in the display, it's gonna display this way. Um, and so all the fields in your Islandora that use the same field type will have the same widgets and display options available to those field types, but you can configure those differently per field. So um, maybe on your entity reference subject, you want to say use the subject taxonomy, but if it's an entity reference for a name, you use the name taxonomy. Um, so you can see here that, well, the answer, what's a Drupal field? It's an instance of a defined Drupal field type that you've given a name and that you can migrate your data into, and that will show up in your editing forms and that will display in your content in terms, taxonomy terms. So um, I'm really talking in this whole presentation sort of about what you get out of the box and what comes with like Island Door defaults. So this is gonna be your experience if you just spin up an Island Door at this point. Um, so the image that you see there is from the manage fields on the repository item content type in Island Door out of the box. So you can see that like alternative title and classification text in coordinate text, in Dewey classification, those are all text plane fields. Um, and then the date, date created and date issued are all EDTF field type. Um, so the label and machine name are the fields, and then you see the field types. Um, so how can you learn about the available field types? Again, I'm wishing I could see my notes because I have like <laughs> asides in there. I want to say I have not found good user friendly list of the core Drupal field types and like what they mean. Um, I've not been able to find that. Um, so for me, the best way has been to like go to the island or a sandbox. There's a link there when you go to that page. If you look at the page, it tells you somewhere on the page what the login password is. Um, so you can go in there and play with it. And then you can like create, you know, change the field configuration and then look back at the content. You can create a content and, and play with it to see like what effect these different things have. Um, so just to, I want to go through this really fast because it's a, it, this is a lot to look at, but I really wanted to put it in here as a reference for folks to stare at because it's the kind of thing that you just kind of have to stare at for a while and then your brain will go like, oh, right, okay. To demystify any of this that sounded like complicated and scary about like database storage and in, in the field and the table and whatever. So like, well, we have people in the waiting room. Are we? Do I have? Okay, I was not watching the waiting room, so I just let two people in. Um, so starting with a taxonomy term. So this is the, the thing, like I think initially we were talking about nodes a lot, and that's where like their descriptive metadata for an object is going to live. but I think as metadata folks, we will also end up being concerned with like the fields on our different taxonomy vocabularies. So I did a previous presentation about those. Um, and so this one is looking at person terms and fields set up for person terms. So uh, this is kind of a messy garbage slide. <laughs> it just throws a bunch of stuff there. Um, so it's got the URL. You can see that this is the term 35. That's the ID that's on the on the term. Um, you're gonna see that in the parentheses when you use this term in your content node. Um, so I've put in the name, the person preferred name. This is actually using that name field that I referenced earlier. So it combines this title given middle name and family. 
sort of all, all in one field um, and has behavior around that. And then I filled out the description. Um, one thing to mention is Drupal assumes some fields, they call them base fields, are going to be like on everything. So that's like a name or label, a description. And then there's sort of under the hood things like a language code, which defaults to the default language you've set for your site and stuff about revisions where it's tracking changes over time and so on. So those things appear in the sort of overall table that's for that type of data. So you can see maybe here that there's a taxonomy term field data. That's the table that I've pulled this from. And it's showing me that the name is what I have in my name field and the description value is what I put in the description field. Um, there's a separate table. This is a pattern that you see repeat. Like if it's a special kind of field type, it's not a base field, it's often in its own table. So we've got hopefully jumping around slides. Um, there's a taxonomy term field person preferred name table where all the data from that field is going to be stored for all your terms. Um, so you can see the entity ID 35, Jane is the first name I entered, Smith is the family name I entered. Um, same thing for the birth and death dates. Um, you can see how they appear in the definition. The field cat date begin was the machine name. Um, so you see that happening in the name of the table where the data is stored, and then that data is just stored there. Um, similarly, switching to a repository item or a content node, um, the title, um, you do not see it. You will not see if you look at the manage fields for the repository item, you will not find title. And that's because it's repurposing that assumed base field that Drupal expects is going to be on everything. Um, and instead of calling it name, is calling it title or something. I'm probably technically wrong about some of that, but that's like in spirit, the reason why you don't find that as a field you can configure. And also why it appears in the node field data table, which is like all the basic base field information about all your nodes. Um, and then if we had entered an alternative title and two identifiers, just the interesting thing here is this delta field. That's what Drupal uses to control the order of the values you've put in, starting counting at zero. Um, so these are, again, just one table per field you've you've set up and the string values are stored in there um here is the linked agent or agent field using the typed relation field setup um you can see over on the top right some of the options for setting up the that linked agent field um and then so this is one of the one of the fields we have that is not just like a simple like one one column as you can see there at the at the bottom there's a field linked agent target id column and that has 35 which was our jane smith term number if you remember and then there's the linked agent relation type rel type um, which is a string that is coming from that list of available relations in your field definition so Um, what does that mean for you and your metadata? Um, basically, if you want to store metadata in Drupal, it needs to go into one of these fields. Um, and most of these fields are simple key value pairs. Um, the type relation we just looked at, the name that I showed you, are exceptions to that. Um, the key being the field name, the value is the data that you enter, and they just sort of go together very simply like that. Um, so how does this relate to like the statement that Islandora supports mods? Kind of, sort of, yeah, it does. Um, if I'm coming from 
I, I am in the process of having to deal with thinking about a lot of legacy mods from Island R7 going into Island R now. So I have metadata like at the top where I've got a display label on my alternative title and I've got an identifier type on my identifier element and it can go into Island R like shown here. Um, and I will say also, you could set things up to deal with this in so many different ways too, but out of the box, you can kind of get it in there like that. And then you can have it map out as this mods at the bottom, but you've lost some pretty significant information there. Um, whether you care about this information or not, no, because uh, up for discussion. Um, it will create linked data from these fields um, with some weird, you know, some weirdnesses in. So we did not on this item set an author or any dates, but here we have date and author statements so that it is currently mixing in statements about the authorship and the date of the Island or, an, or Drupal node that has been created with the statements about your object that you have just created, which is a little odd and sort of like on the list to look at. Um, we have some kind of redundant maybe statements. I don't know what the purpose of this is, um, that this ID is the same as this ID, which is no normally the case. Um, and we have now totally useless linked data. Because <laughs> um, the whole point of linked data is linking to other linked data, which is done by identifiers. And since we don't know what these identifiers are anymore, you can't, can't do anything with that. So like you would need to do something else with, with this. Um, that is the linked data that you see if you put the underscore JSON thing in the URL bar and like look at the link data for one node. Um, if you view in Fedora and I couldn't figure out how to get at like an actual raw RDF representation, but if you're using Fedora it's also saving a version of the JSON LOD link data as RDF in Fedora. And at some point in a meeting, Danny said, yes, it, Danny Lamb clarified for me, yes, it is the exact same link data as that JSON LD with a couple things added, which I haven't dug into and figured out what those are exactly. Um, but the one thing I did notice here is it has swapped the order of our identifiers, which kind of makes sense in a link data world. You're not supposed to have a record. You're supposed to have a bunch of statements that stand independently. but this got me just thinking, and as we were talking about relying on this Fedora RDF as a canonical representation of the data about our objects, needing to be pretty careful about what we, um, how how we do these mappings, um, and being aware of how it goes in there and what it does and and what it doesn't do, um, and. I feel like, like a year ago, somebody floated this idea to me when I was talking about this identifier and identifier type problem that you could have. And then it came up again recently. So I'm going to pick on this idea. So this is something I've heard multiple times um, that you could have like one field that was for your identifier type. And then you fill in a field that was the actual identifier. And so you know that the first one is a Wikidata item and the second one is your universe ID. And I had to contrive this after the fact to make them mess up when they got into Fedora RDF and were alphabetically sorted. So like, this is just another reason that this would not be a good way to like model this relationship. Um, so the Drupal, let's see. Uh, and I just talked about this some. So you want to be careful about that. The other concern I have about this, and this is totally a side tangent, is that the Fedora RDF is a derivative of that actual metadata. Like the actual metadata is that data that is stored in those fields in the database in Drupal. And the Fedora RDF is a derivative created from that. Um, 
And I keep running into it, not just in Islandora, but in every system that I work with that does derivative processing sort of as a separate tangent. Like sometimes that process doesn't kick off. Sometimes it kicks off and it fails. Do we know exactly what we have to do every time we make an update to ensure for sure that that derivative got regenerated? There's a lot of complexity around that. And I'm not sure we've ironed it all out in, in a way that I would trust that to be my canonical version. And then there's like the other thing of like, we are often setting up very specific fields that we need for our use cases that maybe don't have an RDF predicate that we can find. And sometimes we then like lump those together using a broader predicate that does exist. And so then you have the case where you're actually losing data in your canonical copy if you're using the RDF, which may be fine for you. Um, but you should be aware, aware that, that that was happening if, if you're going that direction. So there's an easy example or an easy solution for my identifiers example. The Drupal-y solution would be, well, you just define a separate field for each ID type. So we've got a Wikidata item ID field and a Zooniverse ID field, and then everything works as expected. Um, and the bird's getting really excited about the solution. Um, <laughs> however, um, if you have a lot of identifier types, your editing form is starting to get long. Um, and for every new ID type field, depending on how you have things set up, you might need it to add that to a composite identifier search field. You might need to configure it in any exports you have. Should it be included? Should it not for your DPLA? What do they want? Um, add an RDF mapping, other stuff maybe. Um, and just Friday when I was looking at this, there are a lot of different ID types. And so is this really for general metadata support and use? A good approach. Um, same thing happens for like note type, abstract type, access restriction type. Um, Mark does, if you're coming in from like mapping your data and from Mark, the subfield three, the indicators and the subfield two values form the same behavior as the like mods type. And a lot of metadata standards have this notion, right? I got 73 note types without doing any normalization. I don't want 73 note field. Yeah. So like, how do we deal with this? We got to make decisions about it, is my point. Um, I have mods like this, where the client is expecting this to sort in Pass it on 1992. There are ways to do this in New Islandora. One of the, like the most obvious is, well, you also add a sort date field. So the person entering the metadata has to manually redundantly enter another date, which is not error prone at all. Like nobody's ever gonna skip that. Um, and then the fact that, you know, we're as metadata people asked to do redundant tedious stuff to accommodate decisions that didn't support the full like complexity of the domain needs, it always grates a little bit. So, um, and then the fact that we're all defining our own fields. One of the concerns that sort of keeps coming up is like maybe uh, like maybe Don Richards, who's working with us at Lyricis and I collaborate to come up with something that's really cool that works for us to support sort of an intelligent pick, pick the thing you wanna use for the sort date. But the fact that everybody's defined their own date fields on their own content types, then is gonna complicate us being able to share that back to the community as a feature. Um, So all this is just to say, like, 
we have a lot, lot, lot of flexibility in how we define the fields we're going to use to express our metadata on our content types and in our taxonomy terms in Islandora. However, um, most of those options are very simple in themselves, that key value pair. And then you can make decisions about how you're gonna combine them and you can make decisions about what metadata you don't need to bring over into Islandora. And there's a bunch of decisions to make, but um, I think the thing that doesn't come clearer when you first start looking into moving to Islandora is that you're going to have to do all this, that it's a big project, um, a big, big project. And you're not just going to bring your legacy mods and go boom in there. It's now you're in Islandora. Um, so there's no and there's no standard set of Drupal fields that institutions are using and sharing publicly at this point. Um, and I think it's always been sort of a like, well, people will figure out how to do this and then they'll share it and then we'll have it kind of thing. But that seems to be taking a little longer <laughs> than maybe was was hoped. Um, so it is possible, as we saw with the type relation, as we saw with the name field, to build more complex field types or entity types. Um, people have done really data intensive, complicated things in Drupal. Like there is a module out there to integrate your Drupal with your content your, your customer relationship management software. So they've like made a Drupal entity type for every class of thing in the CRM and then your CRM can talk to your Drupal. So you can do complicated stuff with it, but that hasn't been the assumption of how we were going to use this in Islandora for metadata. So a lot of the cool features that we're all excited about, like easier batch import, the Islandora workbench, data entry conventions, easier migrations, um, the indexing and fastening stuff through the search API, um, doing batch updates of the metadata in the UI, um, and the RDF mapping and, and everything is sort of predicated a lot. It's easier to do with this simple, simple metadata. Um, so there are just, trade-offs that need to be made. Um, concerns that I keep coming up, and I've mentioned these before, um, this lack of standardization in the way the metadata fields are being configured makes it harder to share any functions or features that, like not impossible, but it just complicates it to share these things. Like, and, and the details of this example are probably wrong, but this came up in the Islandar open, last open meeting Born Digital was showing up their install profile and theme and views, and it has a newspaper browse in it. Um, and that browse working properly is dependent on the field date issued existing and being filled in. So like, if you wanted to use that, but you had to find field publication date instead, presumably there's a way around that like make everything configurable as to what field it's going to look for, but it just complicates this, this process a little, a little more. Um, and I've heard it just over and over and over again from multiple people in multiple contexts. It seems like everybody's reinventing the wheel. And it's like, yeah, we are. <laughs> um, so ways forward, this is just me sort of spitballing. And these are things I've heard in multiple places as well. Like we need to stop reinventing the wheel and to like be able to build things that are going to work for multiple places, like shareable features or shareable functions. Um, we need a place to share our metadata configs and a place to share our mappings and tricks for migration and whatever. Like we've talked about this. Like maybe that is the cookbook, the Island or a cookbook. Maybe it's not. May I, you know, this is a thing to discuss. Um, but we need that. Um, and we need more clarity in sort of like on I feel like honesty about 
what it means to administer metadata in Islandora. Like you're gonna need new skills, right? And you're gonna have to understand configuring fields in Drupal, um, set, you know, all, all of this stuff that we're all like picking up over time. Um, that it's not, you can just point it at your, whatever you have and <laughs> you will know what to do with it. Um, one thing I was thinking about is like, we've talked a lot about sharing content types. Like we could develop a content type and share it. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe that's not, because you know, even if you're using mods, part of the complication of using mods is everybody has used it a little bit differently because you have a slightly different need. So like, what if we change our focus to like sharing solutions for specific patterns that we found for like representing publication information? or rights information. And if you like that, you can plug that into your content type kind of thing. So maybe shifting our thinking a little from like, there will be a solution that I will be able to put in and it's going to work for me to like, here's a bunch of solutions and reasons why people chose these and you pick what works for you and put it together kind of approach. But I think being honest that this is going to be required to get you to a workable place and like maybe that is understood by a lot of people coming in but it, it certainly wasn't it wasn't to me <laughs> like it was a big like what <laughs> point at some point and that is part of why i want to like make this presentation um so i'm sure there's lots of other ways forward and this is a total Christina big brain spitball kind of thing. But I think to get to usable place to share our configs, like currently, again, I think for it to all of your field configs in your Islandora are in like 9,000 YAML files. I don't know. It's like 18 YAML files per field for the different configuration for how it's going to do with RDF, how it's going to do in database storage, how it's going to do in the form, how it's going to do in display, blah, blah, blah. And like, I feel like we should be able to push a button and get out a CSV that like pulls out that data from all those configs and shows it to metadata people in a way that they can go, oh, I actually did something inconsistent there and I want to fix it. And then they can share it with the community and you can get an idea of how people have set up their metadata. Like, I'm familiar with the YAML. I'm like, I could code this, but it would be in Ruby and then it wouldn't live in the ecosystem <laughs> nicely. But um, that would be real convenient for sharing, sharing our stuff in like a lingua franca of like communicating what configs we are using. Um, and then even better, like what if you could take that CSV and be like, I really like what Paige has done with rights fields. So I want to push button and uh, choose the content type or types in my Islandora that I want to apply those to. And since it has all the data, I mean, I don't know if that's technically possible. I know you can create fields programmatically from the kind of data that you put in the YAML files because I've done that, but that would make it super easy to allow people in a granular and controlled way to say, I like that part. I could use that and like put it in, in there. Um, but I'm sure it's a lot harder and more complicated than I think it is. Um, and there are probably many other ways, but that is enough for me. Are there questions? Matthew? I just can... wanted to say thank you so much. Uh, this is great. <laughs> um, I can certainly say we've encountered and are headaching about all of these problems right now uh, on our end. Um, if once, if you're developing this out for a bigger presentation, um, you mentioned island or defaults kind of in passing. And I know for sure our team got very, very confused early on about the nature of Islandora defaults and really built up an enormous amount of work around working around it rather. And then suddenly we get people saying, oh, well, you, you could just not use it, <laughs> which was a major surprise for us. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know if that's it has a part in the story somewhere, um, but it was like a big question. And uh, for whatever reason, um, our team like did not 
have a grasp on that until you know it ended up probably with like some one-on-one -on -one conversation with I'm sure Seth or someone very knowledgeable who just said, oh, no, that's totally optional, which was a fun surprise. Yeah, no, I think that's totally part of the story. It totally, I think that needs to be clarified. That makes me think I want to like write up a read me on or add something to the read me on that like this afternoon. No, I've got something else I have to do this afternoon, but um, like it sort of keeps coming up. What is the role of Island or defaults? Do you have to use it? Um, are you going to get the changes when it gets updated? No, you are not. 